How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and of course in this video we're closely monitoring four tropical disturbances that have a good possibility of developing into a tropical storm and we have several of them that could impact the Caribbean islands. Um, so we have this first one, disturbance number four, which now has um, it's um, had its chance risen to a 50% from the National Hurricane Center as it seems like the computer models as of the latest initializations have been leaning a little bit more towards tropical cyclone formation right over the Gulf of Mexico thanks to a lightly sheared environment and plenty of convective activity surrounding um, this tropical disturbance at this time and we have another tropical disturbance which has currently a low 30% chance of developing but that chance has been rising and I definitely wouldn't be surprised in fact I'm expecting the chance for this tropical disturbance to rise to a moderate chance within the very near future because it seems like the European model has been leaning more and more towards developing a tropical storm or um, just south of the bigger Caribbean islands such as Puerto Rico as well as the Dominican Republic and that could bring an enhanced amount of rainfall over those islands so even if this does develop you need to be aware of the possibility of flooding and we of course have invest 99 l which currently has a medium chance of developing and it could directly impact some of the um caribbean islands as well such as the lesser antilles area before eventually moving northward and we have this other disturbance invest 98 l which has a high chance of developing but the good news is, is that it's unlikely to impact land in the very near future Here's how the entirety of the Northern Atlantic is looking like. Um, so we have this um, first disturbance that's expected to make landfall in Texas, whether this develops or not. We do have plenty of convective activity surrounding it, but we're still going to need to wait and see if we're going to see a little bit of a blow up of thunderstorm activity around the center of circulation once this approaches the Gulf of Mexico. The wind shear should um, lighten down. There should be an upper level high that will increase the outflow surrounding this storm system so there is a higher confidence that we could see this develop but there might be a little bit too much dry air on the northern side and here's our second disturbance now approaching the windward islands and we see the thunder shower activity is mostly very scattered we aren't seeing a consolidated area of convective activity however that's expected to change we do see plenty of convection right over venezuela and overall in the northern portion of south america and it should move south enough to where it could be shielded by this small pocket of dry air we see that's inhibiting um, invest 90, 90, 98L from um, developing as of right now, or 99L, um, excuse me about that, but um, we do see um, 90, um, Invest 99L is dealing with a decent amount of dry air just to the north of this storm system, and it's expected to um, make it very difficult for this to um, really intensify with this much stable air surrounding it, and in fact, the computer models as of recent have been favoring um, this disturbance in developing a little bit more than this one. Um, and for Invest 98L, um, it has a decent amount of convective activity surrounding it and we're beginning to see rotation around it which shows that this is definitely strengthening and will likely develop into a tropical storm within the very near future. But it's expected to move northward and this pocket of dry air will most likely fizzle it out. So here's what the latest run of the European model is suggesting and if we were to continue to move forward into the Saturday time frame we see that the European model interestingly wants to develop this chunk away but not this one although the National Hurricane Center is leaning towards developing um, this chuggle disturbance a little bit more than this one but it seems like the European model expects more moist air to surround it and we see the millibar pressure drop down to around 1005 millibars which easily could be considered tropical storm status at this point and we do see for invest um, 99l um, we do um, it's expected to converge with this area of convective activity and though on um, these two storms um, there's a pretty good possibility we're gonna see them converge and pretty and so just one low pressure system that's what the GFS model is suggesting as they're very close in proximity to each other it's very well possible that does occur and we and that could only enhance the amount of moisture surrounding this storm system well i shouldn't say surround because 
we do see the moisture is very lopsided with this tropical wave um, all the moisture is located on the eastern side of this storm while the western half is completely dry so it's definitely going to be difficult for this to strengthen much more than potentially a weak tropical storm and the reason why is because there's a decent amount of wind shear just to the north of this storm so this dry air you see on the western side of the Caribbean um, sea um, it's gonna be able to move in and stabilize the western side and that's definitely gonna inhibit it from developing much more than a weak tropical storm if it ever gets to that status but still regardless there's plenty of moisture on the eastern side that could still bring a heavy amount of rain right over Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic you could easily experience an enhanced flat flood risk by early next week mid to early next week where we do see Tuesday into Wednesday but there's plenty of thunder shower activity going on over those islands so that makes me very concerned when it comes to the possibility of mudslides as well as flash flooding so definitely keep a close eye on this I, i'll say it's very likely at this point um the, the dominican republic and puerto rico will experience very heavy rain from this so in those areas especially if you live in flood, flood prone areas you need to prepare accordingly um because it's very likely at this point um but the big question remains how strong this will get because of course strong it is the more convective activity um there will be but it, you likely either way would experience very heavy rainfall and of course the trajectory plays a role which is still somewhat uncertain because the gfs model wants to steer this a little bit further northward and that really all depends on how fast this trough digs in if it digs in a little bit faster and a little bit further southward expect the moisture to focus more um closer to puerto rico and lesser antilles rather than dominican republic and haiti but if we were to see this trough um move a little bit um, slower and it's a little bit further westward by the time this low pressure system approaches the Caribbean that um, then you should expect more moisture over the Dominican Republic and Haiti rather than the Lesser Antilles and even portions of Puerto Rico so we're definitely going to keep an eye on the track forecast let me show you guys actually the 500 millibar height anomaly to get a better picture of the steering flow so this, the main steering flow will be a weak high pressure system so it'll be able to move westward before eventually like i said this trough will dig in and create an area where it's able to move northward so depending on how far south this trough digs in and how fast it does it that will determine how far east or west the moisture will go there could be that possibility the dr could miss out on the heaviest of the moisture and um but there there's also a possibility that the Lesser Antilles or Puerto Rico could miss out on it, um, at least the heaviest of it. So def definitely keep this in mind, but I'll still expect at least, at the very least, heavy rainfall over these islands. Um, it, what, really, what I'm really getting at is potentially how much rainfall you could experience. But um, we do see that um, not, uh, moving on for, uh, for um, this next disturbance that's located over Florida. There's this clear steering flow, a big ridge that's parked right over the eastern half of the United States. And it's expected to move straight into the border of Texas and Mexico. So there really isn't much debate of where this disturbance will go. Really, the only debate with this disturbance is if it'll develop or not. Take a look at what the European model is forecasting when it comes to it um when it comes to this disturbance we do see the european model does expect uh quite a bit of moisture um around this low pressure system but it really doesn't the it doesn't really um drop the pressure doesn't drop enough for the wind speed to increase and for this to develop enough rotation for this to be considered a tropical storm the european model at least um in its scenario just falls short of developing this into a tropical storm and it's definitely gonna need to do it in a very quick time frame which definitely won't help this storm it'll definitely need a lot more time for it to really organize itself and there's plus there's a decent amount of dry air with this trough moving as expected to move through the northeast by um by tomorrow that's um it should allow a lot of dry air to move southward so um this um tropical wave will definitely um need to deal with that as it continues ahead further westward while there still will be a decent amount of moisture to dump heavy rainfall over texas the air surrounding it might just be a little bit too stable for it to develop enough convective activity for the pressure to lower and for this to strengthen into 
uh, tropical storm. But regardless, expect heavy rainfall over Texas and Mexico. As it, and like I said, the trajectory forecast is pretty certain at this point. So anywhere pretty much south of Corpus Christi, you need to pay close attention to the heavy rainfall and. In terms of the wind shear, the wind shear might be very favorable for this disturbance because um, while it might be in an area where the strong wind shear will be very close by, it's going to be under an upper level high. So it's definitely going to have a lot of ventilation and a good deal of outflow for this to have definitely a good possibility of developing. It really all depends on how much stable air it'll encounter and plus how much, how long overall it'll stay over the Gulf of Mexico because it definitely takes takes time for an area of convective activity to develop a well-defined center of circulation and create a blow up of thunderstorms and sometimes just based on random factors that doesn't happen and that's what the European model is forecasting but the GFS model is showing a different story where the GFS model wants to develop a tropical storm just before it makes landfall in Texas we see the millibar pressure drop down to around 1007 millibars by landfall well this might not be considered a tropical storm I wouldn't go that I wouldn't make the assumption that much just because the pressure is at 1007 millibars but certainly a lot closer to doing so so the chance i'll say is only moderate for the coast of texas um but moving on to our next disturbance um invest 90 um 9 l um or 98 um l um we do see there's going to be plenty of moisture surrounding it for this to likely intensify where we see the millibar pressure drop down to 1002 millibars but like i've been saying the dry air will just be too much for it to handle and the wind shear will greatly increase by the time this moves up north and um for invest 99 l which is a little bit closer to the caribbean islands it seems like another factor it's going to need to deal with is the fact that the lower level winds are moving a lot faster than the upper level winds taking a look at the soundings between the different levels of the atmosphere we see the lower level winds are stronger than what you see in the mid levels which means that the moisture you see in the mid levels where all the convective activity is located is gonna lag behind the center circulation and when we see a disparity between the air, the convective activity and the center circulation that creates a less efficient heat engine for this storm to intensify so the chances um that this will intensify into a stronger tropical storm or hurricane are low but i'll still expect a tropical storm at least out of one of these disturbances so here are what the ensemble members for the European model are forecasting at this time. And we do see quite a few of them, at least for this disturbance, want to take a tropical storm right over the Dominican Republic, which would definitely be concerning, mainly due to the fact that it'll bring a high amount of flooding over the country, as well as Puerto Rico and um, Haiti could easily get involved with this. And I do expect the chance to be a lot higher for this to develop than what the National Hurricane Center is stating. Um, so I'll give this a moderate chance of developing into a tropical storm just before landfall. In terms of Invest 99L, the chance seems very unlikely at this time. It's just too far north. The wind shear is also um, stronger um, this far up north. And there's two... Um, um and it just seems like it's also gonna fight for a lot of energy with this disturbance which won't um, be very efficient when it comes to convergence and we do see some and some members want to take a tropical storm making landfall in texas some don't but regardless expect heavy rainfall over the area and for um, um invest 99 l um, 98L, that's where you could expect a tropical storm but not really much of an impact on land Another thing I almost forgot to point out in this video is taking a look at the more long-term future because right behind these next few disturbances, we have another tropical wave which could have a higher potential of becoming potentially a significant storm. We see that the GFS model by next week expects a lot more mo of a moist um, air mass to be located right over the main development region. So this won't struggle as much as the current disturbances we're seeing and plus we see this rapidly intensify by the time it approaches the Caribbean. Even in the very long term future, we see a hurricane make landfall somewhere in between Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. 
which would definitely be very concerning but again take with this with this with a huge grain of salt it um but even if we were to look at a more uh, manageable um time frame forecast between the next um seven days we see a pretty well-defined tropical storm um, develop um, quickly off the West African coast. So this is only something we're going to need to keep in mind over the next several days. Of course, the amount of wind shear will be key and the amount of moisture because the moisture could e um, easily change over the main development. Um, development region between now and next week. But it's at least something to be aware of in the back of your mind. The European model is also expecting a pretty strong tropical storm to develop straight out of the western um, portion, um, straight off the West African coast. And we do see it becomes quite strong and it, um, into a hurricane quickly um, off the coast much and develops it much more quickly than the GFS model. Want to take it a little bit further northward, which would certainly be good news, but it's de definitely not a good sign that we see both of the most reliable computer models wanting to develop a pretty strong tropical cyclone just off the West African coast that could potentially impact the Caribbean in the more long-term future. So I'll keep you guys updated once we get more certainty with this forecast. And here's the amount of rain you should expect from these next few tropical disturbances. So in Dominican Republic, unfortunately, you could experience well over three inches of rain, especially in the higher elevations and potentially even more than that within the next seven days where you could experience localized areas of eight inches of rain, even 10 inches of rain, which would definitely um, create a major flash flood um, threat potential right over the Dominican Republic. And for Texas, you could expect anywhere from two to four inches of rain from this next potential tropical wave or tropical cyclone moving through. So definitely keep that in mind um, right over southern Texas and even up northern Mexico. So here's my overall forecast when it comes to the next few tropical disturbances. There's definitely a lot to keep in mind but the caribbean prepare for heavy rainfall as well as southern texas whether these disturbances develop into a tropical storm or not and looking into next week we're gonna need to pay close attention to the potential of another tropical cyclone which could be much stronger than the tropical disturbances um you see right here so definitely stay tuned for more forecasts um because we're definitely heading into one of the most active parts of the hurricane season now but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching